This video will discuss the extent of reaction in chemical thermodynamics. So we have our typical chemical reaction here. We have two reactants, A and B. Those are both in the gas phase. Two products, C and D. Those are both in the gas phase. Each of them has their stoichiometric coefficient, which is some integer or half integer, something like that. New A, new B, new C, and new D. And now we're going to define a new quantity called C, the Greek letter uh, C, not spelled like the uh, Roman alphabet letter C, but it's some combination. Don't remember the exact spelling at the moment, but it's this kind of super squiggly E, even more squiggly than the character epsilon. And this is called the extent of reaction. And typically the unit of extent of reaction is going to be in moles. Okay, so we're going to have our reactants, which I have defined as the set of these uh, species I here. We have our products as the set of species J here. So the number of moles of a given reactant, like A and B, is going to be the number of initial moles of them minus their coefficient times the extent of the reaction. So they get consumed based off of their stoichiometric coefficient and the extent to which the reaction has occurred. For the products, they get produced as the extent of reaction uh, goes further. So the number of moles of a product is equal to the initial number of moles of that product plus their stoichiometric coefficient times the extent of the reaction. So the change in the number of moles of a reactant is equal to the derivative here so that's d n i is equal to negative nu i d epsilon. So as the as the reaction proceeds, we consume our reactants, and the change in the number of moles of our products is equal to their positive stoichiometric coefficient times the change in the extent of the reaction. All right. So what factors are going to determine what this extent of reaction is? So as we know. Uh, Gibbs energy, the Gibbs energy of our system, is a function of temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of each of the chemical species in our reaction mixture. So the way that the Gibbs, the Gibbs energy is going to change is going to be its partial derivative with respect to temperature times the change in temperature, plus its partial derivative with respect to pressure times the change in pressure, plus and then for every chemical species, the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of moles of that species times the change in number of moles of that species. And in each case, uh, we're holding constant all of the other variables that each of these depend on. Okay, so we know that um, the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature is equal to the negative entropy. The partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to pressure is equal to the volume of the system. And the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of moles of chemical species I is defined as the chemical potential mu of species I. So if we are at constant temperature and pressure, as we are for many chemical processes of interest, so most chemical reactions we can think about, they're exposed to some external atmosphere of a given pressure when a given temperature, which isn't going to change much during the reaction. So the change in Gibbs energy that occurs during that process at constant temperature and pressure is just a sum for all the reactants and products of their chemical potential times the change in the number of moles of each species during the reaction. So for a, for a physical or chemical process that occurs at constant temperature and pressure, we're looking to minimize the Gibbs energy. The reaction is going to be spontaneous in the direction where dg is negative or equal to zero. Okay, so carrying out this sum here, just taking it out for all a, b, c, and d, we have that dg, the change in the Gibbs energy, is equal to the quantity nu c mu c, coefficient of product c times its chemical potential, same thing for product D, and then minus, the same thing for the reactants, coefficient times potential of A, minus coefficient times chemical potential of B, 
all of that times the change in the extent of the reaction. Okay, so what this implies, based off of the structure of this type of equation, is that the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the extent of the reaction at constant temperature and pressure is equal to this sum of the stoichiometric coefficient times the chemical potential of each species in the reaction, positive if they are reactants, or sorry, positive if they are products which are being produced, negative if they are reactants which are getting consumed as the extent of reaction proceeds forward. So this is the quantity that we're going to define as the Gibbs energy of reaction. The Gibbs energy of reaction is the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of the system with respect to the extent of reaction at constant temperature and pressure. Okay, so then just to say in words what I just said again, the Gibbs energy change of reaction is this partial derivative of the Gibbs energy. So it's the change in the Gibbs energy per mole of our extent of reaction C.